bonfire smoke, definitely. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taste of whiskey.com and today we have a Kalila here on my cask. Kalila from the independent bottler garden McPhail and astonishingly this one is in cask strength. There are some cask strength whiskies from Garden McPhail on the market but not too many and this is one of the very rare ones. This was bottled for the European continent so I'm afraid it might not be available on your market, but Kalila has quite a consistent quality. Uh, this, well, results from the usage of a definite amount of peat uh, in the malt. And this is typically quite dominant for Kalila. And on the second hand, there's a distillery character from Kalila, which shows a little bit of oiliness. <clears throat> so this one is distilled in 2005 and bottled in 2016, so 11 years old. And this is the cask number 301,547. If you find a Kalila at your local dealer and the number of the cask, 301,000 something, is quite near, then the chance is that you get one from the same batch is quite high. So typically the most important bottler, independent bottler, is Gordon McPhail's. And he uh, goes to the distilleries and let, well, a huge batch of casks be filled. Typically half a lorry of a full lorry load, which means 20 to 40 casks. And uh, then Gordon McPhail's bottles the casks well, sometimes in batches of six, seven, eight, sometimes in individual casks like this one. Uh, but because the casks come from the same source, in this case, the first fill X bourbon, uh, the resulting taste is quite near. So this is how you can spread uh, from one bottling to another your thoughts. Number of bottles, 225. <clears throat> In the back it said, uh, cast type first fill bourbon barrel, bottling month May 2016, unchill filtered natural color. Uh, nose sweet, bacon aromas led to green apple, ripe banana, and toasted malt notes, complemented by a peat smoke edge. Well, quite hefty peat it will be. Palette sweet initially, initially with kiwi, pear and milk chocolate flavors enhanced by tangy lime notes. Finish sweet and smoky with lingering bonfire embers. Um, there are two sorts of peatiness in a whiskey. One is the... Uh -huh, yeah. One is the, uh, the bonfire type of peatiness and the other is the medicinal type of pitiness and they result both from the peat and some people say well one is peaty and one is smoky. No. If you have a piece of peat, if you are the next time in Scotland, take a piece of peat, smell on it, you smell quite nothing, probably a little bit of sourness uh, from the acids in the from the roots of the plants rotting in the moss. But there is no pitiness or smokiness from the peat. If you burn the peat with very, very little oxygen, then you have this hefty, intense medicinal smoke. If you increase the oxygen, the fire burns more hefty, heftier, and then you have less of smoke or the other smoke, this bonfire smoke. And one time I've been in a restaurant in Beaumont and they had a, a peat fire burning in the dinner room and, well, you, you smelled nothing because the air, the oxygen was so high and it was burning with such, such a flame, 
such heat and intensity that everything was fully oxidized and no uh, smokiness was spread in the room. So this is how different peat aromas appear in a whiskey. Bonfire smoke, definitely. With a little fruitiness in the back and five minutes ago I had a tasting of this whiskey already and so uh, I'm able to smell the other notes behind the smoke. Otherwise I would ha have to wait half a minute or a minute until my brain says, well, smoke is normal, let's have a look what's behind that smoke. The bottle itself comes from uh, the distributor uh, and he lets me uh, taste it here in front of the camera. I will send the bottle back. Thank you for this. And uh, yeah. So there's this. Well, from the first Phil X bourbon cast, there's some vanilla, some caramel, together with this intense bonfire smoke and a little bit of, of lime, of dryness, yeah. So 54 point something is too much for me, otherwise it would uh, paralyze my tasting buds on my tongue and uh, I would have problems tasting more than one <laughs> here in front of the cask. So uh, let's keep the volume low and the ABV as well. Lighter, more fruitiness, pears, apples. Yeah. So I'm moving my glass in front of my nose because you smell differently in each of your tubes. So if you're, you're shaving in the morning, look in the mirror and look at your uh, tubes in the nose, you will two-thirds of you will find that one tube is bigger than the other one. The smaller one, the air moves faster, and the bigger one, the air moves slower, and therefore, it's the law of Bernoulli, therefore, uh, the more heavy or the heavier uh, compounds stick uh, in the nose to the receptors where the air is moving slower. And the lighter ones uh, attract to the receptors in the smaller tube and therefore you have to move the glass in front of your nose from left to right and from right to left to get the full impact. But your brain is not able to detect left and right, it just gives the feedback from your arm where your glass is but, but not in the nose, you, you can't detect left from right. Yeah. A wonderful complex dram going over to well there's some lime in it but on the other hand it's it's sweet what did they say sweet yeah palette sweet initially with kiwi no no kiwi well they're the green kiwis and the yellow kiwis the yellow one are sweeter the green one are sour but no kiwi no milk chocolate mm -hmm. None as well. A little lime notes, yes. And the aftertaste, well, the smokiness is covering my mouth. Yeah, so the smokiness is quite, not only in the nose, but also in my mouth. So one of the very, very typical Kalilas available on the market, first filled ex bourbon, you won't get that uh, neat or pure in a, well, in an official bottling, 12 years old, something. There you always find mixtures between first fill, second fill, 
cast, third fiddle cast probably, no, I, not definitely. Um, and this one is a single cask, definitely an ex first fill ex bourbon cask, and therefore the aromas are well more on the cask side than on the distillery character side. Thank you for watching, stay tuned, there's more to come and feel free to add your comments in our forum, which is quite growing, thank you for that, and in our whiskey database on whiskey.com. <laughs>